Welcome to the Tide and Tiger and Tider Insider Practice Report. Scott Griffin and Rodney Orr. Normally a practice report involves practice. Today there is no practice. Yeah, a walkthrough. You know, uh, Nick Saban kind of has a program where he only allows his team to practice so many days consecutively without getting an extra day of rest, and this is where it fell this week, the Monday of the Ole Miss game. All right, now also in the press conference, besides talking about the dominance of Vanderbilt, there was a lot of talk about what's going on in the NFL, President Trump's tweets and all those kind of things. Nick Saban was asked about it today in the presser. Here's what he had to say. To me, you know, some of the things that we do in our country, I grew up, they were unifying events, and it's a little painful to see that those things, you know, are not so right now. And But I also respect uh, everyone's right uh, not to be censored in terms of um, the way they ex express their beliefs. So, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just a coach. I don't have the answers to all the questions. Um, I know that most good things come out of love and um, respect and compassion and unifying people. Um, and most bad things come out of hate and dislike and deceit. And um, hopefully we could sort of focus on the above, not the below. So that's Nick Saban's thoughts. Then he was asked later about uh, how teams respond to this in sports as opposed to society. I thought he had a good point about that. We're here in a second. Yeah, I thought he had an extremely good point, Scott, talking about working toward team goals that you all have the kind of you're within the same spirit, so to speak, of what you're trying to accomplish. And I think it was an outstanding response. Here's what he had to say when asked about team as opposed to society. I think that when players are on a team, respect and trust are two things that make a team what it is. The people respect and trust the principles and values of the organization, but they also respect and trust each other. Uh, and I think that because everybody's sort of bought into the same things, you know, you have the same goal. You have the same spirit in terms of what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do. Uh, and, and I think it is a very unifying factor when everybody respects, and, and because you respect the people, you respect the individual differences, you know, as well. I think that's why they call it team. I think that's where you get togetherness from. Uh, everybody sort of is trying to work toward the same standard. Everybody's trying to support the other guy and help him to be able to do that. Now, obviously, in the game last week, Alabama just totally handled Vanderbilt. I thought it was as good a game as an Alabama team under Nick Saban has played in totality. Yeah, I thought obviously it was an unbelievable performance. I mean, when you talk about the things that we've already discussed, Scott, the total domination, 677 total yards to 78. Alabama, a school record, 38 first downs to only three for Vanderbilt. Uh, you know, I think when you look at it from here, though, is how do you use that in terms of your stepping stone? Obviously, they have a big game this week coming up against Ole Miss, a really quality opponent, a team that scored last two years, scored 43 points in both those games, has beaten Alabama two of the last three years. So certainly, I think that alone gets Alabama's attention. Now, Saban was also asked today, and I thought it was very interesting, on his team uh, winning as opposed to defeating an opponent. He says they've won games this year, but this past Saturday was the first time they defeated somebody. Here's what he said. Winning a game is one thing, but defeating the other team um, is entirely different. And um, I felt that in this last game, it was the first time that we really did that, uh, where we played for 60 minutes. We stayed focused on what we were doing. We didn't lose our sense of urgency or intensity at any time during the game. And that's really what we wanted to accomplish because I think that's very important to being successful in our league because of the quality of opponents that you have week in and week out. And that's kind of got to become who you are. That's got to become a personality. And I was concerned about that, uh, but feel much better about it. But now the challenge is, is can we sustain that? I think you can win the game, but the other team still feels good about themselves. And I think that's kind of happened in the past couple of weeks is where you know we let them off the hook or we played you know dominant for a quarter and then the next quarter we let up and just kind of watching the scoreboard so I think this week we uh, you know really just didn't want to even look at the scoreboard just keep playing hard um, you know I think that was kind of everyone's mentality and he you know preached that from that Monday going into the preparation for Vanderbilt so uh, you know I think we did a good job of that and taking the coaching. I mean we've been everybody want to beat us so we, we understand that and 
we, we, we know every week we got to bring it. We got to prepare it the right way. He pretty much, you know, he glues that in her head regardless of how, be, how bad we beat a team. So, because, you know, next week, team when rated, they're going to give us their best shot regardless of who we play. So, you got to come ready. I mean, it's the SEC, so we just got to be ready for any team. I thought that was very interesting, defeating an opponent as opposed to winning the game. And it kind of corresponds with what you heard last week about his speech to the team a couple of days before the Vandy game. Yeah, actually, Friday night before the game, I think his speech was basically, who are you, in terms of creating an identity for yourself. I think that maybe they didn't feel like they played extremely well for various reasons in the past two games, Fresno State, Colorado State, now in the fourth game of the season, the SEC opener against Vanderbilt on the road. It's time to create your identity. And I think that's what he was saying. Who are you? That was the question to the team. And the bottom line was, it's time to get physical. It's time to develop a physical mentality. And I think when you look at how Alabama played in the game, it's very physical. You look at the offensive line. I think that was one of the groups that he was speaking to in terms of position-wise uh, about becoming physically uh, dominant, and they did that. I, I think that it's one of the better offensive line performances that Alabama's had in a while. But, Scott, not only did they block well in terms of protecting the quarterback, but they really, really got a good, strong push uh, in the run game, obviously. 48 yards was the magic number. Six Alabama runners, including Jalen Hurts as in that, got over 48 yards. So, finally, Ole Miss coming in. Now the theme is carry it, on, carry it on, right? Just keep the momentum going. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you look at it, obviously, like I was talking about earlier, you know, you talk about the Ole Miss series here recently. It's been very close. I mean, they've played Alabama really well. This is a good football team, Scott, in terms of, you know, they have some playmakers. They're thin on the defensive side, but they have some really talented guys. Shea Patterson, we've talked about at quarterback. A.J. Brown's a Julio Jones type receiver, in my opinion. They've got a lot of big physical guys, so they can challenge Alabama. And here's the thing. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff. Yeah. Those games can really be tricky. Alabama's had some difficulty. You remember the Ohio State game in the playoffs. They struggled with a late start there. When they lost the 2015 game to Ole Miss, remember that was a late start as well. All right. It'll be 8 o'clock. Can't change that. Ole Miss at Bryant-Denny Stadium this Saturday. We'll have more from the players and much more. Just keep looking on Tide and Tiger on the YouTube channel, also on the podcast, and of course, Tide Insider on the internet as well. For Rodney or Scott Griffin saying so long. We'll talk to you later this week.